Have you ever wondered what the significance of water baptism actually is? Well, if we read the book of Acts, we see that all the new believers were baptized immediately after they put their faith in Christ. We see in the book of Romans where Paul says that those who were baptized were baptized into Christ. So, yes, baptism is significant, and I'm going to be teaching on that today in this video. That's coming up. Hey, good day, saints, and welcome to Disciple Disciplines. On this channel, it's all about making disciples of Jesus Christ by teaching you sound doctrine and getting you active out there on the streets and teaching you how to heal the sick, how to cast out demons, how to preach the gospel, the true gospel, the one that God confirms with signs and wonders, right? How to fill people with the Holy Spirit and how to make disciples of Jesus Christ just like he did. So if you're new here, then consider subscribing. Now, let's jump into today's video. Hey, g'day saints and welcome to this beautiful river out here in the Barren River uh, near North, in North Queensland in Cairns where I'm from. Um, today I'm going to be teaching on the baptism, part of the gospel. The last video we talked about repentance and belief. Right? What is repent? Repent means to abhor, hate the sin. Make a conscious decision. I don't want to live like that anymore. I want to be right and be made right with God. Acknowledge your guilt before the Lord and turn away from it. Yeah? That's repentance. Then we talked about belief. What does it mean to believe? Believe doesn't mean just to have a mental assent of something, but actually to obey. Be obedient to the master, right? We obey him. So we repent, make a constant decision. I turn away from that and say, Lord, I want to obey you. You're right. Be my Lord. Be my savior. I choose to obey you, right? Yeah, it's part two of the gospel. Now we're talking about baptism. The next step of the gospel, baptism. We saw it, the Apostle John preached, uh, the Apostle Peter preached in Acts, remember? Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Very powerful saints. Baptism and forgiveness of sins. We're going to talk about this today, okay? So, go and grab your Bible. If you haven't got it yet, go and get it. <laughs> I'm going to remind you saints every video, okay? Go and get your Bible. Don't just sit there and be entertained by me, no. Go and get your Bible. Go and read it. Okay? Go and grab something to write on. Grab a pen. And let's get into God's Word today. Amen? This is going to be really strong, saints. This is going to be really, really strong. Okay? When we understand baptism. We've got to understand this. This is why I teach this in the Kickstart seminars. We've got to understand this. Because we need, we need to know why we are baptizing people. Okay? And I'm going to talk about that too. You don't need to be a pastor or an evangelist or have some sort of special calling to go and baptize people. No, you just got to be born again. That's it. Okay, and understand baptism. So you can coach somebody through it and help them understand why they are going to get baptized. Why, what they're do why they're doing what they're doing. Because a lot of people get baptized and they don't even know why they're doing it. They're just doing it because the pastor said so or someone said so. They don't even know why they're doing it. We need to explain to people why. Once they understand why, then it's very strong, okay? We see, we see, we see breakthrough, we see deliverance, we see healings, we see amazing things. We see transformation take place, okay? So, baptism. One thing we want to notice, saints, is that when we get through the book of Acts, okay, the book of Acts is where the church began, really, okay? That is the power of God. Not only in the, not only in the apostles, but through all the believers, okay? They were very active in, the, in preaching the gospel. But we see they were, they were all baptized immediately. They were not baptized after a week or six months or a year. They were baptized instantly after they repented and put a faith in Jesus. Instantly. We see in the, in the book of the day of Pentecost, yeah, chapter 2 of Acts, where Peter gets up and he preaches. Yeah, repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah, And then it says, in verse 41, that they believed or they heard the word of Peter, they accepted it, and they were all baptized in the name of the Lord. And there's about 3,000 souls added to the Lord that day. Yeah, strong. Then we see in chapter 8 of Acts, this is Philip in Samaria. Yeah, and this, 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 is not, this is not the apostle Philip, this is the disciple Philip. This is one of the seven who was chosen to wait on tables along with Stephen. Yeah, we see that in chapter 6. Philip goes in there and he preaches to the Samaritans. 
and they heed to the word of Philip, they believe him because they see the signs and wonders that have been done through his hands, right? And demons being cast out and so forth. They believe and they get baptized in the name of the Lord. We see that. And then the angel goes and speaks to Philip about going down to the road, which is a desert area, and go and preach to the man on the, on the, on the chariot, the eunuch. Yeah? We see that at, at uh, Acts chapter 8. And, the, and Philip preaches to him. And the eunuch says, look, here's water. There's some water. What hinders me from being baptized? And Philip baptized him, right? And when he came out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away and he was in another city preaching over there, right? <laughs> Very powerful. Then we see Saul. Yeah, chapter 9 in Acts. This is where, you know the story, where the Lord Jesus appeared to Saul as he was on his road to, on his road. To, to Damascus to go out and persecute the Christians, yeah, arrest them. But the Lord confronted him, mocked him off his horse. <laughs> right? And he was blind for three days, right? And, and did not eat or drink anything in that time. But during that time, the Lord gives Ananias, just a disciple, not an evangelist, not a prophet, not an apostle, just disciple Ananias, who's praying, and he has a vision, and he sees the Lord. And the Lord says to him, go, to the house, the, uh, the street called Straight, and go to the house and go and inquire about Saul, lay hands on him, heal him, and fill him with the Holy Ghost. And Ananias did that, and Paul was baptized. We see that in chapter 9. In chapter 10, we see Cornelius in his household. Yeah? Peter has that vision on the rooftop. Yeah? And the Lord is revealing to Peter about the gospel is now to go to the Gentiles. Okay? That vision had nothing to do with animals, okay, it was about people. So Peter preaches to the Cornelius in his household, as he's preaching, the Holy Spirit falls upon them. And they all speak of tongues, yeah? And they all heard it. And what did Peter say? Who can forbid water that these people should not be baptized? And they were all baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, yeah? What about the jailer? Ch over in chapter 16 of Acts. Paul and Barnabas are in prison, chained to a wall, right? And they're singing. And they're singing praise to God at midnight. And what happens? The big earthquake comes. Yeah? And, and knocks all the doors open. And the jailer is about to kill himself because he thinks all, all the prisoners have escaped. But they're still there. Right? And he, he goes into Paul. He goes to Paul and he falls down at his feet. At his feet. And because he's so convicted by sin, the Holy Spirit is there, very strong presence of God. The man's so convicted, he just falls to his knees, right? And says, what do I do to be saved? Right? And then Paul and Barnabas preach to him, believe on the Lord Jesus, you and your household, and you should be saved. And they keep on reading in 33, he says, he and his household believed and they were baptized that same hour, that same moment. I mean, that could have been like one, two o'clock in the morning, right? So they didn't wait and be baptized the next day. No, they baptized them immediately after they were, but they believed instantly. Okay? In chapter 19. Now I'm going somewhere with this, saints, okay? Bear with me. Chapter 19 of Acts. This is where Paul is in Ephesus. And he finds some disciples there. And he asks them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said, No, we didn't know there was a Holy Spirit. Right? And then. He baptizes them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then he lays their hands on them and they receive the Holy Ghost and spoken tongues and prophesied. Yeah? Now, we see then right through the book of Acts that they was all baptized immediately, even if it was like two, three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> along you know, with the jailer and his family. Yeah? Because they started singing songs at midnight, right? The jailer came, he heard the word, right? And they, so it could have been like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. They all got baptized immediately. Okay? And notice they didn't get baptized with a big crowd of people either. Like with a eunuch, for example. There was this eunuch, the eunuch, Philip, and probably, possibly the coach driver. That was it. Yeah? And they're, in a, they're out in a desert area. Okay? And they found a pool of water, probably just a little puddle or something. <laughs> yeah? And he baptized him in that. We didn't need a big crowd of people to confirm something. No, no, this is between you and God. Right? We're going to go into this. This is very strong, saints, very strong. 
So we see right through the book of Acts that everybody was baptized immediately, okay? Why? Why? Why did Jesus command this in Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 16? He said, those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Strong words, yeah? We see in the book of Acts that Peter gets up and he preaches, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sin. If we go to chapter 22 of Acts, this is where Paul is giving his testimony. He's arrested, okay, and he's being beaten. And the, the officers take him to try to protect him because they're going to, the people want to kill him, right? But Paul says, look, please let me speak to the people. So they, get, they give him permission and he starts to speak to the people. And as he's preaching, he starts to share his testimony, how, the Lord, how he saw the Lord on the road to Damascus, knocking him off his horse, and so forth. And he talks about Ananias coming and laying hands on him. And then we, we see here, this is where Ananias is speaking to him. And in verse 16, it says, And now, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting, Paul, or Saul? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord. So we see here, why were they baptized immediately? For the removal of sin. Now sin where? So you think, people think, well, I've got the Holy Ghost, so I'm free from sin. Yeah, only partially. Because we're going to see there is sin in two places, okay? We, I'm going to show you through scripture on this. We see that the, the sin of the body, the body, is an instrument of sin. We're going to see this in Romans chapter 6 in a moment. Okay? But it's also a baptism into Christ. It is a consummation, like a consummation of a marriage. Okay? Two people stand before each other, before God, and they make a declaration. We are making a commitment to each other. Okay? But they are not in the covenant. That marriage is not in, the, in consummated until they go home and consummate their marriage, now that is a covenant, right? The two become one flesh, right? And what God has joined together, let no one separate, right? <laughs> this is a strong sense. So I'm gonna, we're going to go through scripture and look at this, okay? So we've got to understand it's very, very significant. We don't wait six months or a week, we baptize them instantly. Because if they don't, they're going to fall into sin, okay? Let's look at this. Let's look at this removal of sin, okay? And the sin in the two places of man. Man, in, sin in the heart of man, in his natural nature, in his spirit, okay? He gets redeemed of that, he gets cleansed from that through repentance. That's why repentance, step one, okay? And then, so that he, gets, he repents, he gets a new heart. God takes it, that old stony heart, gives him a new, brand new heart of flesh, right? We see that. And, but then they got baptized. Why? Because there's the sin in the body as well. And we're going to see this in Romans. We'll have a look at this. But let's have a look at this in, in Hebrews. I'll show you these two, two places where the Bible talks about the sin in the, in the heart and in the body. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Let's have a look at this. Very, very, very strong saints. For too long, I mean, baptism has been taught to many Christians as a symbol. But I'm going to show you also in scripture where Paul talks about there's nothing symbolic about baptism. Okay? Nothing. Paul actually tells us to not do anything of, symbol, of symbolism. Stay away from that kind of stuff. But let's have a look at this over in chapter 10 of Hebrews in verse 21 and 22 we're going to see here. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Lord Jesus. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart. How do we draw near to God with a true heart? In full assurance. We have full assurance. How? Of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Yeah. And our bodies washed with pure water. That gives us an assurance to come before God because our hearts have been sprinkled from an evil conscience. No more consciousness of sin because our conscience has been now a, a good conscience, a righteous nature because God gave us a new heart. Yeah, when we repented. 
and put a faith in Christ, choose to obey Him. Yeah? And our bodies have been washed with pure water. Our bodies, the, the sin of the body has been removed. Yeah? Strong saints. Now let's go and look at another one over in Colossians. Chapter 2. Mmm, I love the Word of God. It's so precious. You know, the Word of God, saints, is the Word of God. The Lord showed me this one time when I was out um, spending some time with Him, four days, just away by myself, just me and the Lord. And I was just seeking the Lord about some stuff. And I encourage you to do that regularly because we need to stay in close fellowship with Jesus. We need to really stay close in hearing from Him because we otherwise we get distracted by the world, okay? Other things into our heart and it chokes out the Word. We don't want to be living like that. We want to be fruitful. So spend time with God. Spend time on His Word. But the Lord showed, showed to me when I was out there that, those few days that He said the Word, His written Word, and God, He Himself, are one of the same thing. Yeah? So when we read the Word of God, it is literally God speaking. It is God breathed. It is God inspired. It is alive. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. This is not just ink on a page. This is life, saints. And when we read it, it gets into your heart and it literally transforms your life. It really does. Yeah, it's really strong. Now, let's go to Colossians chapter 2. We'll start from verse 11. Mm. In Him, in Christ, you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. This is not like the circumcision that the Jews performed. They made it by hands. It was a natural, physical circumcision where they cut away the flesh, right? Very painful. <laughs> Thank God it's not that anymore, right? Made with their hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Let me read that again. In Him, in Christ, you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision that was made by Christ. Christ circumcised your body. Praise the Lord. You were buried with Him in baptism in which you were also raised with Him through faith in the working of God that raised Him from the dead. And you who were once dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh he has made you alive together with him, having forgiven you of all trespasses. Bless God, of what the heart, the trespass of the spirit and trespass of the body. Mm. He circumcised you how? Through baptism. Baptism. Very strong things. Yeah? Now, let's look at this then. The, the second part of this, that we are clothed with Christ or consummation. Or like a consummation of a marriage, the two become one. Yeah, we become one flesh. Let's go and look at this, saints. This is very strong. I'm going to read this to you from the Amplified Bible. Okay? I like the Amplified Bible. Now, a lot of people call this the woman's Bible or the lady's Bible. <laughs> because it has more words in it, right? <laughs> but I like the Amplified Bible because it really does amplify the... Greek context of what it actually translates into English very very strong. It just gives it more more meaning. Yeah, there's a lot more meat to it. I like it. It's really good. Let's have a look at this over in Romans chapter six. Mm. This is going. This is going to make you shout, saints. <laughs> this is really good stuff. <laughs> Every time I, I teach on this, I get I get really excited about it. I have to contain myself because <laughs> it's it's just this is a, this is amazing stuff, saints. This is awesome stuff. Let's have a look. Romans chapter 6. You can see I've had this Bible for quite a while. <laughs> it's fallen to bits, but <laughs> I've written a letter to it, marked everywhere, but I'm not going to throw it away. No way. This is the Word of God. Right? Now, Romans chapter 6. <laughs> In chapter 5, Paul is talking about talking to us about the grace of God. Yeah? How we were saved by grace and by he put, and the Lord has poured out His love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful gift. Wonderful gift of life. The Holy Ghost. And then Paul says in chapter 6, Now what shall we say to all this then? Shall we sin? <laughs> right? 
Shall we sin? So that God's grace may abound and overflow? Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? We died to sin? How did this happen? Well, let's keep reading. Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who were baptized into Christ into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. What was the death that he died? He died to sin. Right? Now, we, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we, too, might habitually or continuously live and behave in the newness of life not in sin but in life the newness of life in godliness yeah mm. oh hallelujah for we have become one with him by sharing a death like his we died to sin then we shall also let's say that again for we have become one with him in sharing a death like his then we should also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life that's now lived for God. Not lived for the devil, not lived for the world, but lived for God. Mm. We know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order, this is this, grab, this is this, grab this, grab this sense, get this, in order that our body which is the instrument of sin might be made ineffective and inactive for evil so that we might no longer be slaves of sin mm. oh hallelujah contain yourself Glenn. contain yourself wow you get this saints he says the body of sin it was a body of sin but because of the baptism, it is made inactive. Inactive for evil. Oh, salakadamariasto. Hallelujah. Yeah? This is powerful. So this is why they baptized him immediately. To free them from that slavery of sin. Let's keep on reading. This, is, this gets better. <laughs> for when a man dies, he is loosed delivered, freed from the power of sin. Glory to Jesus. When, did, when does a man die? When he gets baptized. He gets baptized into Christ's death and raises up a brand new life is now lived for God. Mmm. Praise the Savior. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. Amen. Because we know that Christ, the anointed one, being raised from the dead, will never see, never, never taste death again. D death no longer has dominion over him. For by the death he died, he died to sin, ending his relation to it. What? Ending his relation to it once and for all. And the life he now lives, he's living to God in unbroken fellowship with him. Mm. Look at this, saints, it gets even better. Even so, consider yourself also dead to sin. And, uh, and your relation to it is broken. Your relation to sin is broken. Oh, hallelujah. But the, that you are now alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with him <laughs> in Christ Jesus. Glory be to Christ. Isn't this cool? Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Now, Paul is saying here, he's talking about the two, the two parts of sin. He talks about the sin that reigned in the body, right? It's done away with. The body of sin was made inactive for evil. We got baptized, got, we died to sin, and ending our relation to sin, broke our relationship to sin, 
Amen. Now we're living a life that's now lived for God in unbroken fellowship with Him. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But He also talked about this consummation. We are baptized into Christ. Yeah? Into Him. Mm. We are dead to sin and alive to God just like Him. This is really strong, saying it's very, very strong. So we see here, Paul was talking about you died to sin. Your, your relation to it is broken and your consummation into Christ. Now, let's look at this. This is where we get, a lot of people get wrong on this. Like, we go to church and we've got to play the mu music and have the worship time in order to usher in the, usher in the presence of God. Yeah? People say, when I worship God, I feel closer to God. I feel God. <laughs> All these kind of silly, silly things we hear, right? Paul said here, <laughs> Look at what Paul said here. Even so, consider yourself also dead to sin, and your relation to it is broken, that you are now alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with Him. Yeah? Unbroken fellowship with Christ. Amen? Who's in God. <laughs> unbroken fellowship. A lot of people say, well, oh, I've just got to, I've got a fellowship with God. With the, We've got to understand this, right? The word fellowship, okay? <laughs> the word fellowship is a word that people in the world would use as um, a partner, partnership. Like in a business, if someone has a company, they go into partnership with another man or another person and they, they merge together, right? Now they're in partnership, okay? Like, pretty much like a covenant, yeah? Now, the two come together, now this one company is much more stronger, much more bigger, yeah? Okay? We have fellowship or partnership with God that is unbroken. Right? I don't need to come into the presence of God. I have God. He's in me. I'm in Christ. I can't get any closer than that, saints. <laughs> right? I don't have to go somewhere and play some music and get my emotions all stirred up. And because I feel something, I think, oh, that's God. No, God is here whether I feel Him or not. Right? I remember being on the streets times, many times, where I'd be ministering to people. And the power of God would just hit them and they'll get healed and they get set free from demons, all kinds of stuff. I had people with me sometimes, right? Because I was kickstarting them. And they'll be like, whoa, did you feel that? I said, no, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. We act by faith, knowing that God is here. Jesus said, where I am, there my servant is there also. Right? <laughs> okay, saints, we don't have to usher in the presence of God and, and feel things. No, 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 no. Our, um, we are living in unbroken fellowship with Him. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God. Baptism, very, very, very powerful. Very powerful. Okay. We see that baptism is not a symbol of anything. Let's go have a look at this over in Colossians chapter 2, which is there. Let's go have a look again. Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to read again from the Amplified, because I like the Amplified, and it really just um, gives us more information about what the Word's actually saying, which is really cool. Colossians chapter 2. You can read this in the New King James, and it's, you can still read it like that, but the Amplified just really amplifies it. <laughs> right. Colossians chapter 2. Let's pick it up here in verse 16. Colossians chapter 2. Therefore, let no one sit in judgment on you in matters of food or in drink or regarding a feast days or Sabbaths. For such things are only a shadow of things to come. They have only a symbolic value. But the the, the, the reality, the substance, the fact is Christ, right? He has fulfilled all these things. These things are only of symbolic value. They're symbolisms. The Old Testament stuff, the, the feast days and the Sabbaths, those are all symbolisms. All right? They were symbolic of what Christ would fulfill. He came. Okay? So Paul is talking about don't let anyone judge you or deceive you with symbolisms. Obviously, then, that baptism is not a symbol because Paul is emphasizing the, the, the importance of being baptized. We just read in Colossians, 
Yeah? How he talked about, if you read back, back from verse 11, how he circumcised you. He circumcised the sin of your flesh when you were baptized. Yeah? Paul taught, said in Romans chapter 6 that the body of sin was that made inactive for evil, deactivated. Praise God. Sin was cut off when you got baptized. Right? So baptism is not a symbol of anything. It is absolutely essential. Right? Because this is, this is the thing, saints. Baptism is essential for salvation. Now, but salvation from what? This is the thing. So people think, well, I'm saved. And we automatically think, well, that means I'm going to heaven. Great, that's true. That's, that's true. But to be saved is more than that. To be saved from sin, right? Just say, for example, there's a man drowning in the ocean, right? Just say there's a man out here in this lake here, and he's drowning. And he knows he's drowning, and he starts to scream out, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. And I go out there and swim out there and bring that man back in here, rescue him. Guess what happened? I just saved his life. Right? I saved the man from drowning. Right? I remember some years ago, I was on a beach one time, and I was talking to a lifeguard there. And this guy, he was a, an elderly man, but I was talking to him, and he who was telling me how many people that he had saved over the years, right? Now, he didn't send anyone to heaven, he didn't get anyone born again, right? Because he wasn't born again himself. But he's talking about how many people he had saved. He was talking about he rescued them, he saved them from something. He saved them from drowning, right? They were saved from drowning. We get baptized, we get saved from sin. We are free from it. We're no longer a slave to it because the body in its natural state is a slave to sin. It's like this, it's the law, the law of sin. It's like a big lacquer band that ties to our body before we get baptized, right? We can repent, turn away, and start to live a holy life for God, but that big rubber band is still tied to the body. We go on this way, go on this way, want to walk away from it, but then bang, it pulls it back in again. When you get baptized, bang, it cuts it off. It cuts off that tie. Now I'm free. Free, praise God, I'm free. Very strong saints. We must get baptized. Must. I remember some time ago I was on the street one day. Let me tell you this, it's very strong, okay? I was on the street one day. And I'm sitting there, I was just had me a little sign, and I was preaching to people. And this young man came along with his wife and the little baby in a pram. And we started talking. And he told me he was a Christian. He was from England, he was visiting, and he was he was a Christian. But he, and I said, do you have the Holy Ghost speaking tongues? He said, yeah, I do. I, do. I always ask that because a lot of people say, I'm a Christian. Well, do you have the Holy Ghost? If they say no, then you're not, then you're not a Christian. <laughs> right? But he did have the Holy Ghost. He spoke in tongues. But he said to me, he said, you know, I've been really struggling with this sin. I mean, I just, it just keeps reoccurring and I just can't seem to break free from it. I asked him this question. I said, have you been baptized? He said, no, I haven't, but you know, it's funny you say that. He said, because I've really had this desire lately to be baptized. <laughs> I said, that's from God, man. God wants you to be baptized. He has this desire to be baptized. Why? Because his body was too active for sin, and his body was leading him into sin. And he hated it because his conscience was good. He had the Holy Ghost. He wanted to go this way and walk in righteousness, but he, he still had that tie on his body, you see? And God led him to me, and just to confirm what the Lord was already talking to him about. You've got to get baptized, right? We, we've got to get baptized, saints. I've seen this a lot, unfortunately. A lot of people who have the Holy Ghost, and yet they're still struggling with sin because they have not been baptized. Or they got baptized when I was a child, a young, you know, a baby or something like that. We don't baptize babies. We don't see baby baptism in the Bible. Okay? Nowhere do we see that baby baptism. Because baptism always followed repentance and a faith in Christ. A baby has no consciousness of sin. Has no understanding of Christ. Okay? They can't get baptized. Useless. I've seen many people on the street who I've met and say, oh, I was baptized as a baby. I was baptized in, as a Catholic or something like that. But they're not born again. They're certainly not living righteous, that's for sure. Yeah? They're, not, they're nowhere, nowhere near God. Because they got baptized as babies. That's, that's rubbish. 
It's so sometimes we have to re-baptize people. Myself, I was baptized many years ago in the church. I didn't know I didn't know what I was doing really. I just had this desire to be baptized, but didn't even know why. But when they when they baptized me, the pastor baptized me, he baptized me in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> which we don't see in the book of Acts. Okay. But but nothing happened. I wasn't nothing really changed in my life. Until I went overseas many years later, I was over in, in, in Europe. And I really understood about baptism, like, wow, this is powerful. And I saw many testimonies of, of baptism taking place where people are getting set free, really set free from sin, set free from demons. Very strong. And I thought, wow, this is powerful. This is really powerful. And I really got this revelation of the gospel, what the gospel really is. Repent, have faith, believe, obey, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost. I really got this understanding of the gospel. So I decided I'm going to get baptized. I need to be baptized. Now we can say I'm getting baptized again. Actually, I got baptized for the first time because now I knew what I was doing. I understood what baptism was. I got baptized in just a little tub. Just a little tub where they just boom, bumped up and down. Whoa, what air was powerful. I came out of that water like, whoa. And then, you know, I went back to my room as I was getting, I got dressed and I'm on the, on the floor on my knees and my Bible open and my little amplified Bible open. And it was open to Romans chapter 6. And I read the words, <laughs> Those who have been baptized have been freed from sin. I thought, wow. And the revelation hit, hit me. It's just like, I'm free. I am free. And as I was reading that, the Lord gave me a vision. And I saw myself in the, in the tub where I'd just been baptized in. And as I was in this tub, I saw myself in this vision going down in the water, and coming back up, but as I come back up, I saw this old man, this old self, another body laying in the water, just like a dead body, just floating there. I saw this in the vision, and then I just knew that that man is dead. The old man is dead. The old sinner is dead. Yeah, I raised up a brand new life that's now lived for God. It was revolutionary, saints. It was absolutely very, very strong. This is the power of baptism. Very, very powerful. We must get baptized. And if we're out there preaching the gospel to people, or you're bringing people to the Lord, you must baptize them, but under teach them understanding what baptism is. Take them through the scriptures I've just taken you through. Educate them. This is what baptism is. Because they're not going to hear it in church, saints. I'll tell you that. Okay? They don't want. They're not going to. I was in church many years. I never heard that. Okay? Never. But it's only because I was hungry for God and really seeking after the Lord, He led me in the right direction and I started to learn the truth. And I've seen many people set free since then who've come out, who, who have been in the church. I mean, one time we baptized this dear sister. She'd been walking with the Lord many, many years. And um, she came to me one day, said she has some problems, she wants to get, you know, some ministry. So I sat down and ministered with her. And uh, I said, look, you'll get baptized. Now she was born again, she had the Holy Ghost, okay? She had the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, but she had a lot of these problems. She just had like, you know, like, um, like stress and depression and all those kind of problems. She had physical problems as well. And I so we led her through some repentance. The Lord showed her a lot of stuff she had to repent of. She like, whoa. And then she, I said, you've got to get baptized. She said, yeah, yeah, let's get do it. So I baptized her in the, in the, in the pool we had at that little place we're living in, and just a, a swimming pool. Baptized her in there, came out of the pool, just radically transformed. She went back. Well, first thing I told her, I said, "Look, you got to get out of that church because they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna hinder you." But she went back, and she said to me, <laughs> she said to me that when she went back to the church, people in the church that she knew, she'd been going there every week. They knew her very well. They looked at her and said, you're chained, what happened to you? They could see this countenance on her face. It's like she had like her face was shining, like an angel. And they could see it and they said, what happened to you? You've changed. She said, I got baptized. I got baptized, I'm free. And they're looking at her like, what? Baptized? Because they don't understand what baptism is. They think baptism is a symbol. They don't know that baptism is a power that sets you free from sin. But she was free and they couldn't understand it 
And then she sent me this big text one day, how she was out on the street. And she was in McDonald's with a friend, and she was ministering to someone in, the, in McDonald's, and this person in McDonald's, she's, who she's ministering to, starts, the demons starts manifesting. She cast, starts casting these demons out in McDonald's. <laughs> right? It was strong, saints. She wasn't doing any of that prior. None of that. Yeah? All she had to do was hear the gospel. Repent, get baptized. Okay? She had the Holy Ghost, but she was, her body was still active for sin, you see? Now, she was baptized as an as 11 year old girl in, in the church, but she was not free because she didn't understand it, and they didn't baptize her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So they didn't, she didn't know. There was no repentance that, that, that was the previous to her baptism. So there was no freedom, right? Baptism is a freedom from sin. And it is a consummation into Christ. You get baptized into Christ, right? Now I'm going on about it, I know, but it's, it's really strong sense. Let's go to Colossians again. Very, very, very strong. Colossians. Chapter 3. Mm. We've got to understand this sense. This is... Unfortunately, something that has been criticized, it has been mocked, and it's been really, unfortunately, baptism has been looked at as something as, uh, we don't need to do that. Jesus commanded it. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Saved from sin. Yeah? We can't not preach that, and we can't not do that. The apostles did it in the book of Acts, the church did it, we must do it. Okay? And we've got to get out of our traditions, as I said in the very first video, get rid of the religious glasses. Yeah? And let's preach the truth. And let's be teachable. Yeah? Colossians. Mmm, chapter 3. Colossians, so far we've heard, we've, we've seen, that Christ circumcised your flesh, that sinful body. He cut it off through baptism. Paul then said, now let no one deceive you through symbolisms by obedience to Sabbaths and feast days and silly stuff like that. No, no, the substance is Christ, right? So baptism is not a symbol, obviously, because he talked about the significance of baptism. Also in Romans, we talked about, Paul says, you died to sin. And you, are, you came into Christ. Like a man goes into his wife, the two become one flesh. This is why over in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 5, where Paul is talking about the marriage, yeah? A man and his wife, how he relates it to Christ in the church. Yeah? If, why is it related to Christ in the church? Because it says how we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Yeah? In the marriage, it's the same. A man goes into his wife, the two become one flesh. This is a covenant. Right? We get baptized, we get baptized into Christ. We become bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Our bodies are now clothed with Christ. We see that over in Galatians. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, you were baptized into Christ. You became part of Christ. Yeah? Baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. The Amplified says you were clothed with Christ. Mm. This body is no longer a body of sin, but now a body of Christ, a body of righteousness. Yeah? Praise God. God, I am filled with Christ, and I am clothed with Christ. Amen. Wonderful. <laughs> you can't get closer than that, saints. Right? This is wonderful. Now, let's go to Colossians, chapter 3. We're going to see how this old man died. He's dead. Yeah, no longer a sinner. But now you are one with him. Oh, man, this is powerful. Very strong. Colossians chapter 3. Hmm. Oh, this is so beautiful. 
Verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Why? For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ, who's in God. You get that, saints? <laughs> Look at this, read this again. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, you have to renew your mind, on things above, not on things of the earth, not how am I going to make a living and how am I going to survive this week. No! <laughs> Set your mind on Christ, the things above. Why? Because you died. You died. The old man died. And you were, your life, your new life, is now hidden with Christ in God. Where is Christ seated? At the right hand of God. Amen. <laughs> this is saint, this is a strong saint. I remember a testimony I heard when I was over in Europe. His brother was telling us how he was doing a Kickstarter seminar over in Holland and a man came to him and shared a testimony with him. <laughs> and he said, this is before he met the Lord, how he was out one day and he was trying to find his friend. This is a, an old school friend he grew up with. And, but he hadn't seen him for many, many years, and he just wanted to catch up with him, yeah? So we're trying to find him, and he couldn't, he couldn't find him anywhere. So he went to a medium, right? Now, I don't encourage you to do that, saints, so okay? But he went to a medium. Now, the man wasn't born again, obviously, at that time. But he goes to this medium, and he says, look, I'm looking for my friend. This is where he used to live. This is his, his age, approximately. Um, this is his name. Can you find him? And she called on the demons and said, uh, yep, yep, I found him. Oh, sorry, he's dead. And this, this guy was like, oh, really, he's dead? She said, yep, he's dead. He said, are you sure? He said, yep, this is the date that he died. And she gave him the date, the very date he died on. And he went away from there disappointed that his friend had died. So he's, he went home and then one day he's walking down the street one day and he sees his friend. He's like, hey, 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 man, hey, man, I, I've been looking for you, man, I thought you died. He said, no, obviously I'm still alive. No, nah, man, I, I heard you died, man, I haven't got the date that you died on. He said, really, what, what, what day was that? And he told him the date. And his friend said, oh, I'm a Christian now. That was the day I got baptized. Whoa. <laughs> Wow! What happened? He died. Satan couldn't find him. Why? Because he's dead. That's why. He died. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that medium calling on them demons. Oh, he's dead. That's right. He was dead. <laughs> yeah? Satan couldn't find him. He's dead. Why? Because he died. His new life is hidden. He's hidden with Christ, who's in God. Praise the Savior. Hallelujah. Amen? Free, saints! Free! Jesus has disarmed all principalities and all powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in the cross. Hallelujah! Amen? We don't go around saying, well, I'm under attack and this kind of stupid stuff. No! No, 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 no! <laughs> free! 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 Praise God! What a liberty! Yeah? This is awesome! Okay, saints? Satan cannot touch you if, I put if there, <laughs> we are obedient to what Jesus said, live in a walk in a righteous life. Because Paul said if in, in Romans, if you keep on reading through Romans 6, he says, now therefore, do not give your body over to sin. Right? Because whatever you give yourself to obey, you become a slave to that of which you obey. Whether to sin, which leads to death. And opens up, up and opens up doors for demons, right? Or to obedience, obedience to the Holy Spirit, which leads to righteousness. So this, the point is, saints, you still have a free will, right? Even though you have been freed from sin, if you've been baptized properly, if you haven't, then go and do it. 
But if you've been have a, a true salvation, you've repented, had a, a, obedience to Christ, been baptized into Christ, and received the Spirit of Christ, then you are free. Okay? You are free. You are seated at the right hand of God in Christ. Praise Jesus. Far above all principalities and all powers and all might and all dominion. And every name that is named. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Amen. Then go around thinking, oh, the devil's attacking me. No, come on. No. Stop that silly stuff. Okay? So don't give yourself over to sin. You've still got to renew your mind. This is where the big problem is. This is what Paul says he emphasizes more than anything about renewing the mind. Because in the reality, you are free. But if you don't renew your mind to that, your mind's still carnal, then you're still going to be living like a sinner. And thinking that Satan's attacking you and that kind of silly stuff. Yeah? You are free. You must renew your mind. Okay? I've done an episode on this and a podcast about how to renew the mind. I'm going to do a video on it maybe later on. And I'm also doing a course on this, a, a, an in-depth course. Because the, the Lord taught me this some years ago. I was really hungry to know this. Like, how do I renew my mind? And he started to show me over the years through the Word of God and through other, um, through he brought people to my life who, who were good teachers in this and how to understand the mind and how the mind works and why we, we these thoughts and how we get these thoughts and all this kind of stuff. And it's really, really strong. I'm going to be putting this into a course, actually, because it's, it's really strong. But that's, that's coming, okay? I'll let you know about it. But okay, saints, there it is. Baptism. Absolutely essential. If you're not being baptized, you're going to be struggling with sin, I guarantee it. And what you give yourself to obey, you become a slave to it. Yeah? You can have the Holy Ghost speak in tongues, but you are still a slave to sin if you have not been baptized. Okay? And you must get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, like they did through the book of Acts, not in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm going to do a video after this one, a little bonus video, okay, where you'll see me demonstrate baptism, okay. I'll take someone through baptism, I'll put it in a little river like this, a little creek or somewhere, and I'll demonstrate it, and I'll teach you why about we must baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, and what did Jesus mean in Matthew 28. Because that's where most people baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? But what did Jesus, what was Jesus talking about in that scripture? It's only one verse, but we see for the book of Acts, they never did it like that. They baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to teach on that, okay? That's a little bonus video. I wasn't planning that, but the Lord led me to do it. Okay, I'm going to do it, all right? So I'm, I'm going up to the tablelands today, actually, with my, my see my, my children up there. And uh, I'm going to use my son as a as a guinea pig <laughs> and I'll show you and demonstrate how to baptize somebody um, in the name of Jesus Christ and that I will do a little teaching on Matthew 28 what was Jesus saying there okay saints that's the next video that's a bonus I just want to do that for you because I love you okay <laughs> okay saints there it is today next teaching after the little bonus I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit okay part of the gospel the Holy Spirit need to understand saints why do some people not receive the holy spirit even though they repented and been baptized well i'll show i'll tell you why why does, does some people not speak in tongues when they get the holy spirit why do they do that some people do some people don't why well i'm going to talk about that as well okay and what is the hindrance of why people do not receive the holy spirit well we're going to talk about that okay that will be the next video after the after your little bonus okay so two videos from this one about the Holy Spirit okay and that will conclude our gospel part and then we'll go on from there with our kickstart seminar series okay there it is Saints okay stay tuned for the next video until then love you do some screenshots if you have to okay write down the scriptures that we went through watch the video again and again and again and again okay check it out and just a little um, note for you i did and um, on my podcast i did a teaching on the gospel and i broke it over three three uh episodes the first one was on repentance and belief the second one on baptism and the third one on the holy spirit where i talk about this what i've been talking about today um go and listen to that if you want to you can download that for free i'll put a link up here in the card there it is up there 
check it out. You can download them for free and listen to them in your car, listen to them on your, in your earplugs when you're riding your bike or walking to work or driving, whatever you want to do. And that will really help you understand, wow, yeah. I'll share some testimonies in there and it's really strong, okay? So you can do that if you want to, just for you, because I love you. God bless you. Okay, saints, next time, love you. God bless you. Love each other. Till then, amen.